Coming up, we're talking last night's USAC midget action at Bakersfield, a big question about the future of dirt racing and more. Today is Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Every major dirt racing series is basically done for the season at this point, and champions have been crowned with one notable exception, the USAC National Midgets. Don't sleep on this series down the stretch here, as this championship fight between Chris Windham and Buddy Kofoid just keeps going back and forth. I talked yesterday on the show about Windham's season to date and him taking control following the Western World win on Saturday night. But things flipped right back in Kofoid's direction last night at Bakersfield Speedway. In 2020, Kofoid came out on top of a spirited battle late in the going with Kyle Larson uh, at Bakersfield, and he kept it rolling last night to make it back-to-back -back wins at the California track. Emerson Axum started on the pole of the feature and led the first 17 laps, but Kofoid stalked him throughout, never really letting the Petri 15 get too far away. Just past half distance with Axum up top and Kofoid on the bottom, Buddy made his move. He tried to slider attempt the lap before, but Axum was able to cross him back over. Coming to lap 18, though, Axum banged off the cushion a bit, and that was the opening Kofoid needed. He grabbed the lead and never looked back in the closing laps. It was Kofoid's fifth series win of the year. Axum settled for second, Justin Grant was third, Tanner Thorson fourth, and Cannon McIntosh ended up fifth. Wyndham finished seventh after starting seventh, and that meant another change atop the standings. Leaving Bakersfield and headed to Placerville now for the Hangtown 100, Kofoid is back out front with a very slight four-point advantage over Big Daddy. Things are far from over, though, as following the three nights at Placerville, there are still also two nights at Merced and Turkey Night at Ventura left on the schedule. This feels a little like the kind of classic story of the young up-and-comer versus the experienced veteran. Wyndham won't be phased, I think, in these final weeks, as this is really similar to what he faced last season against Tyler Courtney. But Kofoid is eager to lock up his first championship, and you won't find too many dirt racers more talented than he is. One note about last night's broadcast, it was great to hear Tony Laporta back on the mic for USAC. I know he's been dealing with an illness here lately, so glad to have him back in the mix on flow. The midget teams have today to get some maintenance done and drive the 300 miles up to Placerville before the Hangtown weekend starts tomorrow. Don't forget the field will include both Kyle Larson fresh off that NASCAR championship and his Hendrick Motorsports teammate Chase Elliott in the field. We'll talk about all of that on the show tomorrow. And obviously, as the USAC midget season works its way towards the end, there will be a big hole in the field with Dazen Pursley still dealing with that spinal cord injury he sustained last weekend at Arizona Speedway. Sounds like it might be a long road back for him. If you'd like to help out Dazen and his family, USAC is accepting donations to their benevolent fund. You can contribute by sending them to Dazen Pursley, care of the USAC Benevolent Foundation, 4910 West 16th Street, Speedway, Indiana, 46224. You can also shoot a Venmo to at USAC drivers. The same information is also available on the USAC Twitter account at USAC Racing. At last, checks, Dazen, uh, at last check, Dazen's family had updated that he had undergone the surgery and has now been moved out of the ICU. We'll keep hoping for the best for Dazen and his family and friends. In response to me asking for questions for a future mailbag episode, I got a Twitter DM from Steve, who is a regular consumer of the show. He and I go back and forth periodically, and I certainly appreciate him tuning in regularly. He sent me a fairly lengthy message with an overall question for the mailbag show, but I think it's worth giving this one some space and not burying it amongst other questions. His basic question came down to how big do we really want dirt racing to get? He compared it to NASCAR before things went crazy in the 90s and tickets and travel became insanely expensive through the early 2000s. I think Steve, like a lot of folks, likes the local feel of dirt races where you can buy a ticket pretty cheap, grab some inexpensive adult beverages with your friends, and enjoy a night at the races. Certainly don't blame him or anyone else for that. That's basically the main appeal of going to your local track on a Friday night. And his concern is that if dirt racing goes the way of NASCAR, that experience will be lost and priced above what most normal folks can afford. Definitely a valid concern here. As someone who's worked in the industry, I do feel like there's plenty of room for growth for the sport still, but I don't see a future where dirt racing becomes as big as NASCAR in this country. I think what we saw with NASCAR in the Cup Series was a pretty wild confluence of factors that all happened at the right exact moment to thrust the sport into the national spotlight. 
At a time when sports and entertainment options were much less available, cup races could be watched on TV by millions every week, and almost they were, they were almost a captive audience. And the rise of the streaming services and more coverage online has certainly made dirt racing much more accessible in this current age, but I think there's no real threat of things going mainstream. And that set of factors that propel NASCAR is not in place right now for dirt racing. If they know about it at all, I think most people in this country view dirt racing as very much a lower level of the sport and not a major league comparison worthy of something like NASCAR, Formula One, or IndyCar. Ticket prices will always get higher just, you know, because as most things, the cost of the things we buy always goes up. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast here. But I don't think people will be priced out of even the big World of Outlaw shows. If you talk about Knoxville or the Kings Royal or, you know, some of the big late model shows as well. I also think you'll always be able to hit your local track on a Friday for some cheap entertainment because the vast majority of dirt racing competitors, somewhere in the probably in the high 90s percent, are just normal people who want to race and not drivers looking to make it professionally. Remember, for most people, this is just a hobby. It's an interesting thought uh, experiment, but it's my opinion that the dirt racing subset of motorsports in this country will always kind of just be a niche product. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on Steve's question, what you think the future looks like, and what your ideal version of dirt racing looks like. Certainly would be curious to hear what you have to say. Since I last talked about podcast episodes a few weeks ago, there have been a bunch of new ones to drop. So today's list might be a little longer than normal. So here we go. Winged Nation has shows with Darren Pittman, Brent Marks, and Dominic Selzy, Brian Carter, and Kale Conley. Open Red has episodes recapping the 2021 season and the new Outlaw schedule. Loud Pedal has Blake Anderson, Brett Moffat, and Buddy Kofoid. Passing Points has Noah Harris and Brad Sweet. And there are new episodes of Stick Signals, The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, and Wednesdays with Wayne. To see the full list of podcasts and new episodes, visit dirttracker.com slash podcasts. Speaking of podcasts, I actually just finished up right before I recorded the daily. I've got a new conversations episode coming. I know it's been a while since I did one, uh, but I talked with 2021 USAC National Sprint Car Champion Brady Bacon. Uh, I'll release that later today in the podcast feed and on the YouTube channel. So certainly stick around for that one. There are two shows on the streaming platforms today. Dirt Vision is broadcasting Dirt Car Esports Racing from Fairbury. And as usual, there is Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Don't forget also that you can now get subscriptions to Dirt Tracker Plus, more stats and uh, advanced analytics, data visualization, and all sorts of really nerdy stuff uh, is now available on the site. $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year. You can use all of the same tools that I use on a daily basis. See more details by clicking a plus in the nav bar at dirttracker.com. That's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Wednesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.